Hello everyone, it is Erin Flutter here and I am here setting up my August plan with me. This month I am doing a sloth theme. I am really excited about it. I love a sloth and I thought that piggybacking off of my July theme, which was a fruit citrus type of theme, I thought it would be fun to do a sloths on a picnic theme. I don't know why, I just thought it would be fun. So I decided to uh, do this plan with me with my patrons. Um, it was the first time I've ever done that. It was a little bit terrifying because uh, like, I don't know, being like talking to people while I was setting up was like a little nerve wracking, but I had a lot of fun with my patrons doing it. Basically what I did was like I did a section at a time and then like talked to them for a little bit. That way I didn't have to like go crazy editing. So yeah, so um, August is my birthday month. So I'm really excited to do this law theme, which is something that um, of course I, I truly am just so excited for because um, I don't know why my, my brain just like, I don't know. I love a sloth. I, I wish I could move that slow and uh, cause like the presumption is that they're lazy. Right. Um, and I just want to be lazy in my life, <laughs> especially for my birthday month. I just, I want to be lazy. It would be nice to get a relaxing month here. Um, I don't think that's going to happen, but one could hope one could hope. So I decided to do, I decided to incorporate this picnic theme because it's super, super easy to make that picnic pattern because literally when you're using a Tombow, all you have to do is overlap and then the overlapping sections are automatically darker. So it creates this like, like the picnic pattern, um, the plaid picnic pattern really, really well. So I decided to do that for the days of the week. I have, a Monday start calendar, which I didn't actually include um, my like Monday through Sunday on here, but I already like I already know that I use a Monday start calendar, so I didn't really need the labels. And then um, instead of putting two more down at the bottom, I decided to include them at the top. Um, although in a B5, I don't think I really needed to do that. I think it would have been just fine if I decided to put them at the bottom there, but I wanted to save that bottom for my goals section. So right here I am doing like an ombre because if you have seen a sloth before, you know that they're kind of like known for their um, like lots of different types of browns in, in their color scheme. So I thought it would be fun to incorporate this like ombre line a bunch of places for my headers. So over on the right here, I decided to make a master task list. So I have just um, a couple sections for my work and for my home. Of course, all of my business tasks go in my business TN. And I decided to make that plaid look behind my sloth here. I definitely waited until the last minute to do my sloth because I was like really nervous about um, doing this sloth just like in general. <laughs> Um, I, at this point, I wasn't really sure how I was going to do it. I like, m like kind of color block there that, that you can see, but I didn't really know how I was going to do the colors in the sloth fur. So <laughs> I, I definitely say that to last. So I have a section for work, a section for home for my master task list, and then I have a goal section at the bottom. So I use my progress bar stickers from my shop and I am going to select six goals for the month. 
I'm not sure what those goals are going to be. I didn't fill it in because I definitely was not sure what I wanted to do at this point. I know a lot of them are going to be self-care related um, just because of a lot of struggles I've been having. So I really definitely need to um, continue to focus on my mental well-being. So I use my checklist sensor to, checklist stencil to make um, the circles for the checklist over in the master task list. And then I couldn't find a washi tape that really fit with this like theme or with these color palettes. So I decided um, I, I have watched the Coffee Monsters Co. like do some doodle washi the other day. And so I was like, oh, that's a good idea. I'll just do some doodle washi because then I know that the colors are going to match really well. And then I just put like a little picnic basket up there. So I finally started on my sloth and the way I decided to do it was to use the bullet tip of the pen so that you can kind of see through and see the hair. Um, like it, it mimics hair a lot more than just doing it with the brush tip of the pen. So I decided to do it that way and then I used my other Tombos to help blend so that you don't see any of the white behind any of like the quote unquote hair because a sloth is not white. So that's basically what I did here. Um, I was talking a lot with my patrons while I was doing this trying to figure out how I was going to um, make the hair and like I tested a couple things while I was like before I had started this with them. So I, I, I really had no clue how I was going to make this happen. And I'm sorry about the lighting, by the way, I was doing this on um, Wednesday after work. So I just have my studio lights. I didn't have any natural lighting. So, um, the lighting gets a little bit weird, especially because the second page I did not do with my patrons. I did that by myself. Um, and I, I filmed it while there was natural light. So the lighting gets a little funky here um, and it's kind of a little bit hard to tell the different types of browns that I'm using because of that. But overall, I like seeing it in person, I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. The only place that I wish I figured something else out was by the eyes. You know, sloths have brown eyes and everything else was brown. Um, so like, it's not like I could really do anything different, but I was having a hard time making sure that the eyes stood out a little bit more. So th the way I did it was adding the white flex to the eyes using my ac white acrylograph from Archer and Olive. I'm not sure if I achieved the look that I was going for, but overall I, I, I'm happy with how Henry turned out. Oh yes, his name is Henry. Um, my patrons named him because, I don't know, he looked so cute by the end that <laughs> I really thought he deserved a name. He does look a little um, manic and crazy here and he actually looks absolutely insane until you get to the eyes and fill in the eyes because I was talking to my uh, patrons about it. Having the white eyes, it just there's something like inherently evil about it, I think. And it looks evil, like while that's happening. Um, I also made a joke about Henry having a middle part. So, um, because, you know, on TikTok, there was that whole fiasco going on about people thinking that everyone looks better in a middle part. It's not true. Um, I just have to say it's not true. So that's, uh, that's how Henry went and I will put some music on while I finish up Henry.
Yeah, so it's definitely a little bit hard to tell because of how close that black and brown was. I kind of, maybe, if I were to redo this, I would probably, like, step it back a little bit with the browns. Like, maybe start a shade lighter um, so that, like, there could be some differentiation with the brown of the eyes and the, you know, the classic sloth look on the face of, uh, by its eyes. So, um, uh, you know what? I'm happy with him. It's fine. <laughs> I think out of the two hour live stream, this probably took me <laughs> the longest part. Um, it, it was a lot of fun. Um, I, so I talked about this last month when I moved into my B5 is that I don't mind going like extremely overboard on the cover pages because my daily pages, I'm not going to like incorporate that much of the theme um, because it's very much reminiscent of just my day and my daily plans and marking in things like that. So I'm, I'm totally fine going like really overboard and taking a long time just to do like Henry, for example, because I didn't do another sloth in this setup um, on the second page. I, I didn't think it was necessary and it really, it looked fine with just Henry there. So I don't know, I was totally fine with it. And my daily pages, I am going to focus more on my planning style and less about incorporating a theme. Mostly the theme is going to be incorporated by um, that picnic plaid pattern. Um, I may do a sloth here and there. It probably won't be as like quote unquote realistic of a sloth. It will be much more like cartoony, I think, or maybe I'll uh, put together some stickers of some cartoon sloths so that I can just stick it on for my day at the beginning of the day. But then the rest of my notebook will be sketch notes. So it wasn't that big of a deal to me to um, go a little bit ham on Henry over there, but I, and, and then I'm going to incorporate some more of the picnic theme a little bit more um, in my dailies probably because that's a pretty easy theme to mimic versus a sloth, which is a little bit more difficult to draw. So I felt like a bunch of stuff was missing. So that's why I added the washi tape up there. And then, um, I thought about how it used to be really popular in the, uh, pre-printed planner community doing these washi banners. So I felt like there was something missing in that top right. So I went ahead and incorporated some uh, washi banners up there. I so if you if you've never seen it, it's incorporating a lot of different types of washies that go with the theme and um, cutting them into uh, triangles, not triangles. What am I trying to say? Like page flags, and then. Um, cutting them in different lengths to make a really interesting banner. So that's what I did for the rest of that um, top right corner is just incorporating some of the little washi type flags. And I wanted to go pretty simple um, because at this point I felt like there was kind of a lot going on in the page. Although I went to the second page and started incorporating green. So I kind of wish I had incorporated some green into this, um, this washi banner. I think I might go ahead and add a couple more to the left so that I, at least I can uh, put some green in there because otherwise there's no green on the first page and then there is green incorporated on the second page. So I'm probably going to go back and change that. I just didn't really think about it while I was doing it. And now looking at it now, I'm like, oh yeah, there is something missing because I know what the second page looks like. So this is the second day. So obviously the lighting is a lot better because I am doing it in natural light. So I did not want to incorporate habit trackers this month. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to incorporate a habit tracker sticker on each of the dailies. So, and then I'm going to create a tip in so that I can see what each of the segments, um, 
each of the segments stands for, similarly to how I did for my July plan with me, where I split a circle up into eight parts, and then each part represented one of my habits. So I'm gonna incorporate that into my actual daily pages versus doing habit trackers on my monthly. While doing habit trackers on my monthly worked for July, I think part of the reason was I was doing the plan my day series, but typically I have found that habit trackers on my monthly pages don't work for me as well as doing habit trackers on my dailies. And so here you can see a little sloth arm um, getting ready to eat out of the picnic basket. And I use the quote, go out on a limb, that's where you'll find fruit. I, I was gonna do a sloth hanging from that limb, but I also wanted a section for kind of my commitment to myself for the month. So I did this in July where I said, uh, this month I am, and kind of made a commitment to myself. So that's something that I've been trying to incorporate a lot more. And there you can see Max, who of course <laughs> needed to be involved because my cats always need to be involved as a cat is sitting on my lap right now. And I keep trying to shoo him away so that I can finish this. But of course he does not want to do that. So you can see uh, in that section I have this month's focus. And then I am doing my typical self-care bingo on the other side. And that's where you can see me incorporating more of the green elements. I'm using like a very... Um, very limey type of green and then the browns and purples and I also think yeah I use this like natural green that I was using for the leaves um, I do still think that there's something missing up in that upper right so I might incorporate a sloth like more of a cartoony sloth up there um, because I do think that that space has something a little bit missing right now but I decided to continue on the washi banners into this section and then uh, use the same picnic plaid pattern for the self-care bingo. So if you haven't seen me set up a self-care bingo, um, basically I do it by senses essentially where I have like physical, emotional, intellectual. Um, so it's like a little bit more sensory based for my self-care. And so I have five sections of, yeah, it's a five by five box with um, spaces in between so that I could do this picnic pattern and so I'm going to come up with five different things that are physical activities that will lead me to self-care. That's something like doing some hiking or um, riding my Peloton or um, achieving a certain amount of walks with my dogs or something like that. Something that really um, puts me in a relaxed mood and being in nature typically does that and working out as much as I <laughs> have not been doing it. Um, I need to do it more because it's definitely helpful. So that is my August plan with me. I hope you love this setup. I had a lot of fun with it and I uh, will definitely include some more daily pages as I go so that you can see how I incorporated this theme. So please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, all that kind of jazz, and I will see you next time. Bye everyone.